Hi, I'm Marty Zoffinger. Thank you for clicking on my video. This here is my bike, and that is my DIY PVC rod holder. Now, if you're saying to yourself, Marty, I think there's more to this video than just your bike and these rod holders, you'd be right. What you might learn in this video is that manipulating PVC enables you to do all kinds of projects, not just rod holders for your bicycle or ATV. I'm hoping that you come away with this with some inspiration, an idea for using PVC in your future projects for DIY, whatever it may be. So let's get right to it. PVC is a wonderful material and you can manipulate it all different types of ways. Here you can see how I'm flaring the top of this inch and a quarter pipe to make it a nicer looking and better working rod holder. Again, once you know how to do things like heat up PVC and manipulate it, you'll be able to make all kinds of cool stuff in the future uh, for your DIY projects. Now, as far as this one is concerned, I've already made one. And I saw the technique online, and the way it was done was a little bit different than this. What I had found on YouTube was somebody attaching PVC to the post of a seat. Here I got a metal pipe that I'll use as a surrogate post. What the guy did is he cut the PVC right down the middle, heated it up, and then squished it around the seat post. Once it cooled, it turned into a clamp. You just drill a hole, trim it up, put a nut and bolt through it and it works pretty good. Once this is tight it makes a really good grip which you could make a little bit better I guess if you put like a piece of rubber on the inside around the post. However in my situation where I was going to mount this I worried that the spokes of the wheel might hit the PVC. And that's why I chose to alter the design a little bit, like you see here. So let's take this uh, back to the drawing board. So I'm going to use a different technique where I cut it completely off on one side and wrap it around on itself. Let's do that right now. Try to get it right in half. Now whether you use propane or heat gun, you gotta watch yourself because these things get really, really hot. Hot. But they cool pretty quickly and take on new shapes right away. I kind of like making them a little bit extra long. I'll say why later. Now with just a little trim and drilling a hole. It's almost ready to use. I'll just give it a little sanding first. Now this is going to be a little bit more difficult to snap onto this uh, than this is, I think, because that can be just spread apart equally, um, whereas this one you kind of have to really uh, get it over the edge, but it's doable. It'll give you a nice firm hold. Now the next step is going to be to add the actual rod holder and if you can see the one on the other side you got to choose an angle that's going to work for you and then I'm going to mark the top of this with an angle like that top and bottom. This is a little bit critical <clears throat> to get your angles the same and for the bottom one and the top one to eventually line up but it's not the end of the world if it's slightly off because you can always heat it up and tweak it a little bit later on. 
but I want to get it kind of close. Start about there. I'm choosing a distance away so not to hit the cargo rack. And something that's similar to the other side. And then I'm going to measure out this way and that way on the bottom. Yeah, that should do it. You see how uh, the top and the bottom are somewhat skewed and that's to give me my proper angle just like the other one. Okay, when I cut this part, I made this a little bit too long and I had to trim it off. But to go around this side here to try to give me a, an idea of how long it has to be, I'm just going to use some string. I'm making it big enough so that there'll be room for the nuts and bolts to squeeze together. So that's about it right there. And I'll use that to measure. It's pretty long. It'd be a shame to cut this off and have it be too short. So that's why I'm doing that, you see? And then we can choose a side. Uh, I cut off this side over here, so I'm gonna cut off this side here. Doesn't really matter. Same length, that's pretty good. Now, we're gonna cut this completely off. And actually, this gets cut here. I've shown projects like this in, in the past. And uh, I've had people recreate it and then show me their recreations. Even some people have sent them to me in the mail. And there's people out there that do such a better job than me. Uh, measuring twice and cutting uh, once and sanding and making everything pretty. Whereas I kind of like grip it and rip it, so to speak. And uh, hmm, yeah. so maybe your project will actually turn out looking nicer than mine. Looks like I made it a little bit too long there again, but that's fine. Definitely better too long than too short. One reason it's better that it's too long is because by pressing it down, you're still getting a curve there, which will make it uh, more aesthetically pleasing later. If I had just squeezed it down here, this part would be way below there, but it doesn't matter. This just makes life a little bit easier. You can see where they come together. Just like that, trim that off. And then between the pipe and the cutoff, make a circle. Again, between where the cutoff is and the pipe, make another circle. And that should do it. Mm -hmm. See that how it uh, it looks better when it's got a little bit of a curve to it. Where's me nut and bolt? Where is it? Oh, you're hiding you. You're a bastard, you. Ah, it's on the floor over here. <clears throat> Okay, hopefully this bolt is long enough. Looks like it's just there. That's pretty good. Looks like this part's sticking up a little bit and get a little sanding. But other than that, that's half of it done. Well, one of the things that I noticed here is that this piece is a lot longer than that piece. And for sake of aesthetics, what I'm gonna do is cut this piece down. You can see I got it marked already. And I'm just gonna take that piece out, heat this up, rewrap it around and trim it, drill new holes, and hopefully 
the holes are not in a bad spot. But I thought about just redoing this and not showing it in the video, but this is real life. So if you try projects like this, don't worry, you can just reheat it and, and re-manipulate it or start from scratch because PVC is cheap. Well, after I redrill two new holes, it looks like I'm going to have an extra hole in this one. So part of me wants to remake it, but I'm going to leave it just like this as a reminder that mistakes happen and it's no big deal. <laughs> Although I joke about it, I am serious. Mm -hmm. Some of my best projects or artwork or sculptures turn out the best and I'm not afraid to mess up a little bit. Well despite the minor differences between this one and that one and uh, slight imperfections <laughs> I'm still pretty pleased with the way this one's going and now all I got to do is do the top strut which is going to be just like this except with a slightly different angle in between the two and then we'll paint it and we'll move on from there. Well, you guys have seen this process already, so I'm just gonna speed through this one real quick. Here I am heating up the pipe, maybe making it a little too hot <laughs> and uh, wrapping it around the post to get that shape, leaving it a little bit long to get that roundish look to it. And while I'm here, I'm marking the angle of the rod holder so instead of straight up and down, these little marks are going to be the skew. Then I got to pop it off of there and cut it and shape it, reattach it. And now the build portion of this is just about done. Well, there you go. That rat holder is stout enough to hold anything. And uh, now all I gotta do is put a little paint on it. Uh, maybe a little sanding first. And how about that? Well, there you go. Custom DIY PVC rod holders for my bike. And if you guys have enjoyed this video, maybe you feel a little inspired. Uh, I don't know, maybe you have a desire to be creative and go out and make something yourself. Then good, I've done my job. Just don't forget when you're out there playing around, be careful. Don't cut yourself. Uh, don't burn yourself. <laughs> More than anything, don't be afraid to make mistakes because you won't ever create something if you're afraid to mess something up. Now, your job, if you did like this video, is share this. That type of stuff makes it so that I make more videos. And um, you might want to subscribe and hit the notification thing because something tells me that this bike has got a future of uh, some more interesting videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Oh yeah.